Southeast Georgia, and the Lowcountry. This is WJCL 22 Morning News. See us now. Breaking right now on WJCL 22 Morning News, a string of suspicious fires overnight. You are looking live right now at the charred remains left this morning. The three other spots firefighters say went up in flames. Plus, a deadly school shooting leaves families desperate for answers. What authorities are now revealing about the shooter. And it's a budget battle showdown on Capitol Hill. The reason federal vaccine mandates could lead to a government shutdown. A bitter battle over abortion rights in the Supreme Court. Why justices comments may hint towards a ruling. It is right now 6 o'clock on this Thursday morning and we are looking live from our Skyview 22 camera on top of the Homewood Suites on the river. We want to thank you so much for waking up with us right here on WJCL 22. I'm Emma Hamilton here with our meteorologist Melissa Hall and Melissa cool and mild out there this morning. But what I've really been loving is those afternoon temperatures. Oh yeah, Emma, the afternoons with the sunshine and the seven days. Oh, it's is it like, December? <laughs> exactly. It feels so much like spring outside, but the overnight lows, they'll remind you yes. it is December mm -hmm. folks. We are actually cooler than we should be, but let's start off with a little bit of good news to this temperatures compared to yesterday morning they're better everybody waking up a little bit more mild in fact almost 10 degrees milder over in statesboro jessup thank goodness because the temperatures are cool outside we got the low 40s in downtown savannah and garden city but at the coast you have those upper 40s some folks though subtract 10 degrees from what you see out at tybee island we got a few upper 30s in the western part of the area Metter, statesboro you guys feeling the chill with those clear skies overnight well some Sunrise 707, grab the glasses and that sunshine will get us nice and warm by the time this afternoon comes around. Unseasonably warm, in fact, with a light breeze out of the west southwest. Should be in the mid 60s. Check it out. We're going to have some mid 70s out there. Lighting another candle on the menorah this evening for the Festival of Lights. Nice forecast for it by 5 o'clock. Right before sunset, we're going to have mid 60s. Another cool evening, but not as cool as where we woke up this morning. That morning low trend shows you things are going to be getting a little bit more mild and getting downright comfy. Low 50s outside. What about those daytime highs? We've got the clouds creeping in. That's what's going to cause this. I'll show you what they do to the daytime highs here in a few minutes. Melissa, thank you so much. We're going to head outside for a live look at traffic this morning. We are at Highway 80 at Pymarin Road in Pooler, where it looks like there's a few cars moving along out there, a school bus, and everything is moving smoothly. Breaking news overnight, a string of suspicious fires across Savannah now under investigation. We're looking live right now. This is a burned out bus at the visitor center in downtown Savannah completely burned to shreds. You can see also that van right there was also burned. Now this is at the corner of MLK and Louisville Road. Savannah Fire says this was just one of the first of four suspicious fires from overnight. Savannah Fire says someone with a gas can left that bus fire and the van in the same parking lot as well as a porch fire on nearby Pulse Street. Then hours later, around 2.45 this morning, Savannah Fire responded to a shed fire at West 36 and Jefferson Streets. So you're looking at a map right there of where that is. They say the cause of all four fires is under investigation. All new this morning, new details surfacing about a deadly school shooting in Michigan. Four students have now died and several others are hurt. As ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, authorities are now revealing what was in the shooter's journal and what he said the night before that rampage. This morning, this 15 year old in a prison issued orange shirt is now charged with murder and terrorism for the shooting rampage at a Michigan high school. At his first court appearance, authorities charged the teen as an adult and prosecutors revealed the shooting spree was captured on school security cameras. What's depicted on that video Honestly, Judge, I don't have the words to describe how horrific that was. The prosecutor describing how the suspect first entered a bathroom with a backpack, then came out holding a gun. At that point, he methodically and deliberately walked down the hallway, aiming the firearm at students and firing. Right outside the bathroom, he, he began firing, Judge. After children started running away from the defendant, he continued down the hallway, again at a deliberate and methodical pace, pointing and aiming inside classrooms and at students who hadn't had the opportunity to escape. 
Four students died, including 14-year-old Hannah St. Juliana. Her father asked me to tell you that she was one of the happiest and most joyful kids. Authorities say the shooter used a handgun his father had bought just days earlier. Investigators say video found on the suspect's phone shows him talking the night before about killing students at Oxford High School. And they say he wrote in his journal about his desire to shoot up a school. But police insist they received no prior warning about a shooting. You are the parents of uh, Ethan Crumley, is that correct? Yeah, correct. That's correct. The boy's parents, appearing at their son's court hearing via video, were called to the school the day before and the morning of the shooting for what was described as concerning behavior. Police say those meetings are now part of the investigation. Still no word on a motive. A law enforcement official says investigators are trying to track down a Snapchat video, which apparently warned about a shooting at the school, prompting some students to stay home. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. In Greenville, South Carolina last night, a vigil for the school shooting victims. Community activist Jack Logan prayed on North Main Street. He says this tragedy hits home. It occurred and the message here to all parents, you never know. Love on your child. All new this morning, an MLB lockout. Major League Baseball is plunging into its very first work stoppage since 1990. It's due to a collective bargaining agreement that expired last night. So here's what's happening. Owners have locked out players in a move that threatens spring training and opening day. Teams decided to force the confrontation during the offseason instead of risking a walkout over the summer. Players are looking to address several issues, including declining average salary and competition in hiring. All parties hope to have issues resolved before the start of the season. This morning, new steps to fight the latest COVID variant, Omicron. Now that it has the first case has been confirmed here in the U.S. ABC's M. Wynn tells us about President Joe Biden's new measures to fight the virus. Today, President Biden will reveal his administration's strategy to fight Omicron, the new coronavirus variant blamed for an exponential rise in COVID cases in other parts of the world now found in California. I think any measure that can be safely done to prevent the spread of COVID in this country should be welcomed. The president will reportedly announce an extension to the mask mandate on planes, buses and trains through March and is expected to reveal a plan giving Americans better access to testing. It comes one day after doctors confirmed the variant in a patient who recently returned to San Francisco from South Africa, where Omicron was first detected. We had a suspicion that potentially this may be a case of Omicron, given that um, the, uh, there have been many cases reported in, in, in South Africa. Doctors say the patient has mild symptoms, is fully vaccinated and was not yet due for a booster shot. Tests to determine the severity of illness from Omicron and whether it can evade vaccines could take weeks. For now, Dr. Anthony Fauci is encouraging Americans to get their booster shots. If you look at the level, for example, of an antibody, a neutralizing antibody, peak following the second dose of a two-dose mRNA, it's like at this level. If you look at the peak following the third shot boost, it goes way up here. Meanwhile, the CDC is now requiring airlines to collect contact information for all passengers entering the U.S. from several countries in Africa. Emwin, ABC News, Washington. The South Carolina Attorney General is now weighing in on three pending lawsuits against three federal vaccine mandates. The defendants in the suit, nearly a dozen U.S. states, including South Carolina and Georgia. We told you that a judge temporarily blocked the OSHA mandate in November. A judge in Louisiana put a temporary stay on the CMS or healthcare worker mandate on Tuesday. Attorney General Alan Wilson expects the third lawsuit on the federal contractor vaccine mandate to be heard on Friday. He says the mandates are unconstitutional and are, quote, an overreach of the federal government. The Congress has not delegated to the executive branch government at the federal level the ability to mandate a vaccination. That is nowhere in the Constitution. They have violated federal law. They have violated um, principles of federalism that allow states to basically own that area of regulation. A.G. Wilson adds private entities are still allowed to implement their own vaccine mandates, even if the federal mandates are permanently blocked.
Right now, a, a government shutdown is looming. That's if Congress doesn't pass a budget by tomorrow night. As our Exodias reports from Washington, the hangup, those federal vaccine mandates. Opposition to COVID-19 mandates could force a government shutdown this weekend. Conservatives in the House and Senate who are against requiring workers to get vaccinated want to leverage that opposition in the budget fight. Some Republicans want to pull funding from OSHA, the administration in charge of enforcing mandates. According to Senate rules, one senator objecting to funding OSHA could delay the whole process. Other members of the GOP, though, are concerned they'll be blamed for a shutdown if it happens. Senate leaders from both parties, though, say they believe a shutdown will be avoided. The White House says it's confident a spending bill will pass. In Washington, I'm Ike Sadias. The new session of the Georgia General Assembly begins in just over a month. That was the topic of the discussion during the Eggs and Issues Breakfast yesterday, sponsored by the Savannah Area Chamber of Commerce. It was an opportunity to hear from lawmakers about some of the priorities the legislator will focus on starting next month. I suspect now that the historic tax credit is expiring, we'll go back and try to, because it's been extremely successful, go back and work on that as well. But you're going to see things that just sustain jobs and get us, the government, out of the way. I think the continuation of reapportionment, because we're getting ready to deal with local lines, and that matters, that the local municipalities will have a chance to have feedback on their actual lines that are drawn. So that's one of the things. The other thing on our end is going back to transportation, and tourism. The new session starts January 11th. Other priorities will include supporting a $6 million request from both Savannah State and Georgia Southern Universities for improvements to their campuses.